Yeah, nice video. So uh, from the beginning, I would like to greet our newcomers. Uh, I do believe you know this guy, Nikolai Bordin. Yeah, uh, Nikolai Bordin joined our business developer team. And so Nikolai, welcome to the family. <laughs> Applause. Um, yeah, another guy, Artem Bagaudinov. Uh, he joined um, Gleb Lesnikov's team and he will help him to, well, to cope with all issues, uh, uh, with all infrastructure issues. All right, Artem, welcome. Okay, uh, Dodo Pizza International. Uh, my name is Renat Sagadeev and I am the international business developer. Today I would like to tell you about, well, our international business in Europe. And so let's start. What is the mission of international business development? I would say that my mission consists of two core tasks. The first one is to help our new franchisees to launch the, uh, pizza stores in their countries. Here, uh, a business developer takes a role of a project manager to make sure that our, uh, our new pizza stores will be uh, launched smoothly. Another big core task is to help our current partners abroad to develop and improve their businesses. But in fact, um, running a new, uh, a new country uh, doesn't look like this picture. It, it, it is more like uh, this crazy kayaker who is uh, ready to jump into a lot of uncertainties of a project and the only way you have to do is just to dive into uh, all issues and tasks to know what will be at the bottom. And of course, if you want to stay alive with, under this, uh, uh, with this environment, whether you are going to run a new country or uh, even to scale any decisions among uh, our existing pizza stores, <coughs> Collaboration and communication with the whole company is the only way to achieve success. Okay, let's go further. As many of you know, uh, today Dodo Pizza works in 10 countries. Four of it located in uh, Europe. They are Estonia, Lithuania, Romania, and the United Kingdom. In Estonia, we have uh, two pizza stores, and one of them, Talon One, is our champion, among other pizza stores in Europe, of making the highest um, turnover per month per, per one pizza store. So, by the way, this is our brand new uh, restaurant in Talent 2. So, I'm sure that uh, this restaurant will um, show us the same sales figures as the first one. Okay, Lithuania. Now we have three pizza stores in this country. One of them located in Klaipeda and two another located in uh, the capital of uh, Lithuania, uh, Vilnius. Well, in, Lithu in Lithuania, everything is fine. And, uh, our partner, well, he's very positive and he's in good mood because everything, well, is good. And he's going to open new countries in Europe. Romania, five countries, uh, five pizza stores for now and two more pizzerias will have been launched by the, by the, by the end of this year. As a result, Romania for now is our third market for Dodo Pizza after Russia and Kazakhstan. And finally, well, um, the United Kingdom, where we have just one pizza store in Brighton, and well, to be frank, uh, frankly speaking, um, after seven months, uh, this pizza store is still unprofitable. Of course, this is very bad for us, and we're going to run more marketing activities, uh, learn how to implement them effectively, and uh, we will run new products. We will, uh, we will, we will continue to uh, improve uh, store, man store manage management, and we will uh, finally change the situation. As a result, we will find, well, our business model to scale our business in, uh, in the United Kingdom. Well, totally now, we have 11 pizza stores, but I'm not going to tell you about, well, um, success or unsuccessful stories about each of them, because you can hear these uh, figures on our uh, monthly, uh, monthly meeting, uh, when, where some of us will always tell us about uh, our results uh, by, by the end of the, of the month. I would like to pay your attention to this graph. Uh, what we can find here, uh, this uh, here you can compare sales figures in Europe uh, for the last one and a half years from, the, uh, from December 2016. And what is the most interesting fact? So just imagine our business has grown almost four times for the last one and a half years. So how did it happen? Uh, how did it happen? Because we all know that uh, for the last few years we were focused, and even now we were focused on Russian markets, and uh, well, as it's still the biggest one for us. 
Thus, our European partners didn't get a, a sufficient support from us to improve and develop their business. And again, how did it happen? I think there are a lot of reasons for that. And we can spend, uh, well, hours discuss discussing and making different hypotheses. Well, some people would say that um, Lithuania, Romania, and Estonia are less competitive markets. And I agree with that. Some people would say that, well, uh, our partners uh, did find some, well, good, effective uh, marketing activities. And I also agree with that. Um, but I'm sure that there are a lot of reasons uh, for this success. But I do want to believe that our Europe uh, European partners, they're just a little bit crazy as we are all sitting here because we are confident in our products that makes our customer happier. I'm sure that people all over the world want, want, uh, want the same things, uh, the same values. They want good product and good service. Okay, totally we have just, well, 11 pizza stores, come on guys, during three uh, years. Yes, it's not a big amount and there is a uh, certain reason for that. We always work under, uh, with constrained resources and as a result, uh, the time of running new countries was too long. Just imagine, the last country we have launched is the United Kingdom and pizza store in Brighton had been running during long, very long 13 months. Well, sometimes well, it was too long and of course uh, too expensive for us. We realized the problem uh, of running time for a new country. So what, what did we do? Um, we did some research uh, and brainstorming meetings with all teams to find out what we can do to speed up the process of starting new countries. And in a while, uh, we got some solutions uh, that, can, um, well, that can help us to speed up the process. And uh, now we can commit that we will be able to run a new countries during two months. Uh, it means that the next year, the next 12 months, we will be able to open from, from four to five new countries and we are on the way to make this plan come true. By the way, do you know uh, what country we are uh, running at the moment? Business developers just don't say nothing. Uh, no, this is actually Belarus. I believe that at, at the, uh, in September, uh, the very first Dodo Pizza will be launched in uh, Minsk. After Belarus, uh, we're going to start our project in Slovenia, where our partner already has an ideal premise in the center of Ljubljana. After that, we are planning to run Germany, Ukraine, and Moldova. But again, this is just our plans, and everything can change. Well, finally, we have more than 35 countries in Europe. And um, I'm sure there will be a lot of tasks and projects uh, that will help us to uh, build a strong, uh, well-known uh, Dodo Pizza brand among European customers. So if you possess some certain skills uh, we are looking for, if you um, share our principles and approaches, please uh, write me to my email and we, we can discuss your opportunities. Thank you very much. So good morning, friends. Very glad to see you all, honestly. Uh, my name is Anton, and my main mission at the company is the recruitment of new franchisees. So some of you may be wondering, quite justifiably, Anton, just what the hell is that? And how does that add value to our business? Well, first and foremost, this is about maintaining that constant, unrelenting search for new people, new amazing people to work with, which is a really top long-term priority for our business. And then tactically, bringing in new franchisees just allows for a faster, more dynamic growth. It means more stores, wider geographic coverage, greater brand awareness, etc. So having a constant stream of new franchisees is definitely a good thing. Now, our traditional, our regular model of acquiring franchisees is through signing franchise contracts in vacant cities. So perhaps some of you have seen our table where prospective franchisees can browse and pick a vacant city where they will subsequently launch their first Dodo Pizza. And then this model had been working for us quite well until about a year ago when we all of a sudden ran out of cities with population over 100,000 and consequently monthly numbers with new franchisees started to decline and this is especially noticeable well starting to be especially noticeable in around July 2017 so you know we believed and still maintain that amongst the 500 or so remaining cities some of which are pretty small indeed 
there are still plenty of opportunities to do good business with Dodo Pizza. So we kind of, you know, we set ourselves a target of five contracts with new franchisees per month and to sort of help things along a little bit, we kind of intensified our franchise marketing activities, right? So we blogged about Dodo Pizza in small cities, Mirny and Virsk. We advertised the franchise in our restaurants, made sure the information about the franchise was easily available through the main Dodo Pizza website and in the mobile app. We tried all the various digital channels to promote the franchise. We printed an article about our franchise in an airline magazine. And you know, we even started a Dodo Pizza franchising channel in Telegram. And yet, over the last 12 months, instead of recruiting 60 franchisees as we planned, we only managed to do 33. Now, how big of a tragedy is that? Well, certainly, it's kind of discouraging, but by no means is this the end of the world, because fundamentally, our course will remain unchanged. We will continue to actively pursue expansion into territories where we see good potential for Dodo Pizza. And we will also seek to provide opportunities for qualified, driven candidates who wish to become our franchisees. So as part of this project of you know, territorial expansion, we've been working on a new project recently that we expect to go live in about a week. And the idea was suggested initially by our friends at uh, Top Franchise, thank you very much. Now, it was basically to create these unique localized websites about the franchise. How localized? Well, a separate franchise website for each vacant city. That way, potential franchisees from, for instance, Vorkuta, instead of going to our main franchise website, would actually end up on the Dodo Franchise Vorkuta page, where they would find all kinds of you know, very useful and relevant information, such as what kind of capital requirements they need to fulfill to launch a Dodo Pizza in Vorkuta, and what kind of format we propose for this city, what kind of you know, revenue and profit they can reasonably expect from, from this project in Vorkuta, what kind of payback period they can uh, expect for this project in this specific city, and even where in Vorkuta they need to be looking for the ideal location for their uh, Dodo Pizza store. So this is a great plan, right? I mean, you set up a bunch of these localized franchise websites, then you set up a bunch of online marketing campaigns to drive the local traffic from Vorkuta to these respective sites. And then you just kind of, you know, you sit back and wait for those franchise contracts to happen by themselves. I mean, isn't that cool? That's kind of cool. So, only major sort of drawback with that plan is though that there are currently around 500 vacant cities and making 500 unique landing pages, well, that just wouldn't really be worth the while, would it? So instead, we decided to make them for a list of 30 cities currently vacant that according to our analysis have the most potential. And here they are, ladies and gentlemen, the top 30 currently vacant cities uh, you can take pictures, but obviously, you know, you'll be able to, to access this through the recording later on. Um, we expect the websites to go live in about a week. And of course, we will be waiting for your comments and suggestions. I mean that from the bottom of my heart. Now, the, um, you know, the, each one of these 30 cities is a good opportunity for people who want to become our franchisees with relatively low risk. So that's great. However, if you actually look at the geography of their distribution, you know, Moscow is up there. So most of these places, they're, you know, they're pretty far away. And for the great majority of the people of our potential partner, moving that far is just too much of a lifestyle change to, uh, to embrace. So what can we offer those who want a relatively low risk territory to start with us, but who aren't necessarily prepared to move to uh, near the Arctic Circle? Well, there isn't much, frankly speaking, right? Because everything is occupied. But the one possibility, one possibility, is to actually buy an existing store. And Dodo Pizza stores go up for sale every now and then, in case you didn't know. That happens for various reasons. But the important thing to understand is that the larger we become, the more of these instances there are going to be, and we need to be prepared to make good use of them. And, uh, you know, it's really in our best interest to help sell these stores because uh, if the franchisees decide to do so, of course, because quality of management will tend to decline when the owner is no longer invested personally, invested in the store's future. So, uh, you know, we've seen some amazing stories 
of these uh, acquisi uh, acquisitions by new franchisees because it's a good opportunity to bring in new franchisees to purchase these stores. And one that uh, springs to mind after the most recent franchisee summit, of course, is Jura Kostin, who became our franchisee by buying a functioning store in Pargolova that hadn't been doing so well, by the way. And he completely turned it around 180 degrees. I mean, a very inspiring story. And we definitely want to see more of those. So I've been working recently to put in place a system of a kind of store brokerage, if you will, that would basically allow us to sell faster and that will also focus on prospective franchisees as potential buyers for these stores. So, um, you know, the, the store owner or the seller, they, they negotiate directly with prospective buyers. So our function, our role in, in this is essentially reduced to producing a high quality um, sales uh, presentation for the store and then distributing it amongst our contacts of which we do have quite a few indeed so the procedure right now is as, as follows you know we have the seller fill out a very detailed questionnaire about the store with all the essential information the financial information information about the lease contract about the city about the location photographs of the store interiors and exteriors etc after receiving the filled out questionnaire we propose we put, we basically put together this sales presentation that we then, uh, you know, adding any other relevant inf information, then we send it back to the seller for uh, approval. After receiving the confirmation, we have our designer put together these attractive looking layouts that, that we're going to then distribute via email and other channels that we have, you know, at our disposal. But basically, then we can distribute. Uh, we distribute uh, to around uh, 20,000 plus uh, of our subscribers. And then, you know, <laughs> <laughs> then, um, of course, potential uh, buyers, people who are interested parties, they, they can uh, contact the seller directly. And, of course, after sending a, a several thousand emails who, to people who at some point wanted to become our franchisees but either didn't or couldn't or something like that, you're going to get all kinds of responses. But, I, you know, honestly, guys, the responses overall have been quite positive. And with the help of this uh, instrument there, that we're going to continue to develop, we've been able most recently to sell a store in uh, Shakti and uh, less recently in Zelenakumsk. A couple of other deals are currently in progress. I'll tell you more about this project the next time we meet. In the meantime, it's been a real pleasure sharing with you, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you very much. And then, uh, of course... We have uh, Arseni, we have Arseni Insectif car. Thank you. Morning, friends. My name is Arseni Melnikov. I'm a member of Department of Communications. I make communications in Dodo Universe convenient and efficient. And I'll tell you about latest projects of our team. First of all, let's talk about knowledge base in general a bit. Knowledge base is an engine of our communications. It's our own environment where we could get and share our knowledge by using the most efficient ways. Also, information in knowledge base presented in the clear structure as well as we need. But what if there wasn't such platform at all? Let's imagine uh, thousands of documents, spreadsheets, pictures and others permanent regulation, access regulation routine, um, groups in VK, groups in Facebook with infinite account of posts, chats and messengers, uh, and no common view, no common understanding at all. It looks like a nightmare, but for our contact center it was a reality just a week ago. Uh, as you know, contact center is a pretty big department uh, more than 200 employees living in multiple cities in different time zones. Uh, there must be such an engine of communication like a knowledge base, but it wasn't. So managers from contact center, uh, uh, it took many sources of managers from contact center to organize their information. And also such way of communication couldn't be safe because uh, risk of losing confidential data were huge. A good question, why we didn't do it earlier? Because of access regulation. Um, old knowledge base suffered from the same problem. We had no opportunity to give a personal access for every employee from store or every operator from contact center. 
as soon as we got a new platform, we got an ability to run such projects. When we were starting uh, this project, we noticed that we don't want to support similar features and knowledge base, so we should extend our existing features for contact center needs. We analyzed communications in this department and found out that uh, their model is very similar to model of standards, which proved to be good. This is a knowledge base of uh, contact center based on standards platform. There are standards, instructions and useful articles for operators. Uh, but there should be one more feature, list of late news, updates and so on. We asked ourselves, isn't it a new info? Using in every store, every day. Uh, at, at that place, the stars were aligned. Uh, every store has a table with uh, standards and we can easily digitize one more production process uh, without additional requirements to partners. Uh, and it is significantly increase uh, efficiency of standards up. Every employer could check new info on the way to the road and there are no needs for store manager to create document, print it and put it into the folder with new info to share every update. This is a new info from corporate chain in Moscow at Nemetkina Street. It looks like this. Uh, Polina does very good markups of new info posts. Do it like Polina. <laughs> How it works. If you are a store manager, you must be a store manager to create uh, posts with new info. Uh, at the main page of standards, you will see uh, this form um, and uh, it works easy, just, uh, just add new info to your store. Also, we add an opportunity for regional managers to add posts for entire local chain. What is it local chain? Uh, it's a set of your stores, uh, doesn't depend on departments or cities. For example, we created a local chain for our corporate chain in Moscow, which consists of uh, stores in Moscow and store in Himke. If you are a regional manager, uh, contact with me and we will create your local chain in our system. Uh, this feature has been tested uh, at uh, contact center, corporate chain and in training center in 14 stores and the five local chains has been created and now every store can use this feature. What's further? Now we are working at the marketing knowledge base. The most important features are done. Uh, marketing knowledge base is already run, so you can navigate there by clicking marketing at the top navigation. Um, our designers uh, made a big revision of all marketing sources uh, and soon they will transfer them all to a new platform. Uh, marketing knowledge base already connected to our, to our source system so you can find uh, all mockups. By the way, one more new feature in marketing knowledge base is a uh, marketer's page. Uh, this page collected all useful articles for marketer, must read for every who de depends with market marketing. Uh, contact with me, leave me feedback, this is my email, thank you and have a good week.